and welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Brewster with the Branson Gospel Singer Songwriter Association and you're tuned in to the Kids for Jesus Christmas special. First up, we're going to have Miss Keeley Jarrett who's nine years old from Branson, Missouri and she's gonna sing a beautiful Christian song for you now. Welcome Miss Keeley. Miss Keeley Jarrett. <clears throat> Today we have a very special program for all the kids, and we want to welcome the yet to come kids that's with us. That was Miss Keeley. She's nine. Right beside me here is Maddie. She's eight. In the rocking chair is Cade, and he is three. And clapping her hands now is Chloe, and she's 20 months. And then we got all the big kids in the back row. I won't tell their ages, okay? But they're big kids at heart. Please welcome Paul Roush. He's got a very special story to tell us. Hey guys, when I say ho, 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 what do you think about? Who, 
who do you think about, Santa Claus? Well, Jimmy's got up thinking about Santa Claus, too, so let's find out his story. Ho, 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 Jimmy was shouting as he ran through the house. Ho, ho, ho. Grandpa, who had been taking a nap in his recliner, woke up with a start. Well, well, but what's going on, he asked. Are we being invaded or something? Mother, who had come into the living room to tell Jimmy to be quiet because Grandpa was asleep, sighed, oh, I'm afraid so. We've been invaded by Jimmy, the Christmas menace. What's gotten into him, Grandpa asked. Does he need a two-by-four sedative to calm him down? A two-by-four sedative? What's that? Gr Grandpa grinned. You know, you take a piece of two-by-four board and fly it swiftly to the bottom. It works every time. Wouldn't you like to have that, Keely? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Mother rolled her eyes and shook her head. Someday I'm going to take you seriously without thinking about it. What will happen then? Grandpa leaned back in his recliner. And he said, well, then we'll have a chance to get some peace and quiet so I can finish my nap. You're a nut, Mother said. I know what Grandpa answered, and proud of it, too. Grandpa took a deep breath and called out, Jimmy, settle it down for a while. You know who might be watching. You don't mean, Jimmy said with a shock. I do mean, Mother answered. Subdued, Jimmy looked just like a balloon that had all the air let out of it. His face fell so far, his chin was almost dragging on the floor. If you'd look closer, you might have even seen the beginnings of tears in his eyes. I'll be good, he stammered. I don't want him to put me on his naughty list. <laughs> Grandpa was a little puzzled by this exchange, but he didn't say anything until Jimmy had left the room. As soon as he heard the bedroom door close behind an abnormally quiet Jimmy, he asked Mother, what's going on? What was all it all about, he asked. I've never seen Jimmy so quiet before. It's almost as if he was sick or something. It's the last one, Mother said. He's afraid of not something but someone seeing him misbehave. That's terrible, Grandpa exclaimed. He shouldn't have to be afraid of anyone, especially at his age and this close to Christmas. Maybe I need to take care of this problem for him. Who is it? I'll put a stop to this nonsense right away. Grandpa was getting so upset by the thought of someone scaring his grandson like that that he was already halfway out of his chair before Mother's voice stopped him. It's Santa Claus, she said with a smile. She just loved the way Grandpa would tell, be, be all raring to go when he thought someone was messing with his family. Slowly, Grandpa settled back down in his chair. Oh, he said in a low voice, I thought it was somebody real. To Jimmy, Mother said, Grandpa, Santa Claus is real. Poppycock, Grandpa said. He's too smart for that. Well, then Mother replied, why don't we just ask him? Fine with me. Mother called Jimmy back into the living room and had him sit on the sofa beside her. Jimmy wasn't sure what was going on as he looked back and forth between his mother and Grandpa. Did I do something wrong, he asked. No, Mother answered with a smile. Grandpa just wants to ask you some questions. Go ahead, Grandpa. What's got you so freaked out today? What do you mean, Jimmy asked. Well, all day long, you've had enough energy to light up a thousand Christmas trees. You've also been saying ho, ho, ho over and over again so much that it's about to drive me crazier than I already am. I can answer that one easy enough, Jimmy said. It's because, wait a minute, Grandpa said. I'm not finished yet. Okay, what else? It's that song, Grandpa said. I can't get it out of my head. You must have sung that song at least a million times today. Where in the world did that thing come from anyway? Oh, it's just a song I heard when we went to see Santa Claus at the mall yesterday, Jimmy said. What's it about, Grandpa asked. Half the time I couldn't understand the words you were singing, and all I could make out was somebody named Snicker. All that did was make me hungry for a candy bar. Jimmy tried unsuccessfully to hold in a laughing snicker. Oh, Grandpa, he said, that's just a song about an elf who is only two feet high and who is always happy and helpful when he's making toys for little boys and girls in Santa's workshop. He's a big helper to Santa. It's a neat song. Sometimes they play on the radio. I know. Why don't we see if it's coming on right now? With that, Jimmy jumped up and ran over to the radio to turn it on before Grandpa or Mother could say anything. As soon as it came on, sure enough, 
they were playing that song. As soon as the song was over, Jimmy turned off the radio and sat back down on the sofa. Grandpa was shaking his head. Whatever, he said. It's just a silly song. Besides, you know, do you know that all this Santa and the L stuff is not real, don't you? I mean, surely you don't believe in all that stuff. Jimmy thought for a long moment before he answered. I know what you want me to say. I know you want me to say that I think it's all fake, but in some ways I think it is also real, he finally said. What? Grandpa thundered, almost jumping out of the ch his chair. How in the world could you ever think Santa Claus and a bunch of elves are real? Calm down, Grandpa, Mother said. Remember your blood pressure. Forget my blood pressure, Grandpa said in disgust. I'm trying to figure out how anyone as smart as Jimmy could believe in a fairy tale. I'll bet the next thing will be the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy. Oh, what have I done to deserve something like this? I ask you, Lord, why me? Why me? As Mother tried to settle Grandpa down, Gra Jimmy came over to stand by his chair. Grandpa, he said, I don't think you understand. What is there to understand, Grandpa said? You believe in Santa Claus and the elves. Why in the world would you ever believe in such nonsense? Jesus took a deep breath before answering. It's because of Jesus, he replied. Now I've heard everything, Grandpa said, rolling his eyes. There isn't anything as far apart as Santa Claus and Jesus. <coughs> what in the dickens have they been teaching you down there in that school? No wonder so many people are at home are homeschooling their children if this is the kind of thing we can expect. I didn't learn this in school, Jimmy said. I figured this out all on my own. 
Maybe you'd better explain, Mother said. You got me wondering what you're talking about myself. Jimmy sat back down in his place on the sofa, and his mother joined him after going to the kitchen for some hot chocolate for each of them. She had an idea this might take a while, and she knew they would be getting thirsty soon. After each had taken a few sips from their hot chocolate, Jimmy began to explain. Everybody knows who Santa Claus is, he began. He is supposed to be a happy little man in a red suit who lives at the North Pole where he has a workshop. In his workshop, there are a lot of little elves who work all year long making toys and presents for all the good little bo girls and boys in the world. While they are doing this, Santa is keeping track of all the things that are happening and making a list on which everybody's name is written. When somebody does something good, he marks it down, and then when somebody does something bad, he marks that down as well. At the end of the year, he checks his list over and over again to make sure he hasn't made any mistakes, and when he is done, he loads up his sleigh, which is pulled by eight tiny reindeer, and takes off to deliver the presents to only the good boys and girls. The bad ones get a lump of coal or some switches in their stockings instead of presents. Ugh. The reindeer are named. Could you know the na reindeer's names? Huh? How about how do you know them? Dasher and Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. They have magic powers so they can fly and pull Santa's sleigh all over the world to help him deliver all those presents. Didn't you miss one, Grandpa said dryly? You must mean, what's his name? Rudolph, Jimmy said, laughing. I didn't forget him. He's a special one who leads the others when there's a tough road ahead. There are probably others, too. We just don't know, know their names. Anyway, it's because of their magic they can deliver all those presents in one night. That's another thing Grandpa said. <coughs> Scientifically, it's impossible for one man to travel all those miles and visit so many homes. Besides that, you have the problem with him getting in those chimneys and all. Some places don't even have a chimney. If they do, there's usually a fire in the fireplace. After all, it is December. Like I said before, Grandpa, Jimmy said, it's magic. And like I said, poppycock. Jimmy, Mother said quietly, you said before that you believed in Santa because of Jesus. What did you mean by that? It's because what each of them does, Jimmy said quietly. What do you mean? I already said what Santa does every year. He keeps track of what everybody is doing, and at the end of the year, he gives out presents to those who are on the good list. Grandpa, I remember you once told me that up in heaven, there was a great big book that has everything written down in it that happens here on earth. I kind of figured the same thing for Jesus. His book is like Santa's list. Everything that anybody says or does is written down, and at the end, he of it all, he gives presents to anyone who is on the good list and not so good stuff to those who are on the bad list. What kind of present does he get on the good list? Grandpa asked. Why, Jimmy said, the best gift of all times. The gift that all only he can give to anybody is the gift of eternal life. Mother and Grandpa were not expecting this, so they just sat there with their mouth open. If it had been summer, there would have been a steady stream of flies going in and out. Yuck, how about you want that? No way. No way. How about you? You want that? No, yuck. After a moment, Grandpa shook his head to clear it. What, he said, happens to those on the naughty list? Well, they don't get eternal life, of course, Jimmy answered. And just like the boys and girls who get coal and switches in their package, their stockings, they don't like what they got either, but by then it's too late. They already messed up. Okay, Grandpa said, since we're already going down this path, explain the reindeer to us. Oh, that's easy, Jimmy said. I don't see how, Grandpa muttered under his breath. I've read the Bible through and through, and I never once found a flying reindeer anywhere in it. This ought to be good. Grandpa and Jimmy said, don't be so silly. Of course there aren't any flying reindeer in the Bible. The flying reindeer is just a picture of what they represent. Now I'm lost, Mother said. The reindeer, Jimmy said, are pulling the sleigh with all the presents inside of it as well as Santa Claus, right? I'm with you so far, Grandpa said. Well, I think of it like this. The sleigh is like the Word of God or the Bible. Inside of it are all the presents or 
which are like the gift of eternal life, everyone who's on the good list. And, of course, Jesus is in there, too. So the reindeer are the disciples carrying the Bible and the good news all over the world. The way I see it, the reindeer are like the first ones who carried the gospel when it first started going all over the world. So who was Rudolph, Grandpa asked. Why, that's Peter. Jimmy answered, remember what I said about Rudolph, that he was the leader when there were tough times ahead? Peter did the same thing. He was like a leader in those early days. As for the other reindeer, who don't have a name, they could be the disciples that we don't know that much about. Grandpa gave Jimmy a big, long look as if he couldn't believe the things Jimmy had been saying. Finally, he asked, okay, there's one thing you haven't explained yet, the elves. Where do they come in? Jimmy grinned a great big old grin. Those are the easiest ones to explain of all, he said. So go ahead and explain them, Grandpa said. There are three L's right here in this room. He said, there's some L's here, and here, and here, and here, here, and here, and here, and here, and, and everywhere out there. Hmm. Those are all the L's. Um, Grandpa looked all around the room. He looked a second time. I think I finally caught you, he said. I just looked twice, and I didn't see a single pointed ear in the place. Maybe I don't see as good as I used to, but I think I would see a pointed ear if there was one to see. Let's see you get out of this one. Jimmy looked Grandpa square in the eyes. It's not pointed ears that make an elf, Grandpa, he said. It's the spirit of wanting to help others and give them the greatest gift that has ever existed. The elves are me, Mother, and you. We're the ones who are Jesus' helpers. Grandpa sat up a little straighter and blinked his eyes in surprise. This was the last thing he had ever expected to hear from Jimmy. He didn't want to admit it, but inside he knew Jimmy was right. He could only sit there listening as Jimmy went on. The way I see it, Jimmy said, we are all supposed to be helpers for Jesus, and the best way I know of is to help him is to be happy and tell everybody about him. Isn't that what you think also, Grandpa? Grandpa didn't know what to say. He just sat there looking first at Jimmy and then at Mother. Finally, he said, and the little child shall lead them. What was that, Grandpa asked? Mother asked? Grandpa grinned slowly. I th th think the teacher has just been taught by the student, he said. In all of my years of life, I would have never thought of anything like that. I guess you can teach an old dog to do tricks. Did I do okay, Jimmy said? You did fine, Mother said, but I would like to know something. When I said, you know who might be watching, why did you get all quiet and s act worried? Because, Jimmy answered, I got to wondering if Jesus might not like me acting like that, so I stopped. Why would you think Jesus wouldn't like you to act like that, Mother asked? Because I know that in a lot of churches you have to be very quiet and act like you aren't, that you're not really happy. I was afraid I was supposed to do that too, and I didn't want to be a bad example for Jesus. I only wanted to be his helping elf, just like Snicker. I want to be happy and take Jesus' gift to everybody. Is that okay? Mother kind of sniffled a little bit as she reached out and gave Jimmy a big hug. It's more than okay, she said. You just go ahead and be yourself. That's what Jesus wants all of us to do, and somehow we've all forgotten that as we've grown older. Don't ever change. I won't, Mother, Jimmy said as Grandpa cleared his throat. <coughs> I second that motion, he said, and I have just one more thing to say. What's that, Jimmy asked. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All three of them started laughing, and the, then the front, front door opened. Father was home. What's so funny, he asked. What did I miss? Grandpa looked at Jimmy. You want to tell him or should I, he asked. You go ahead, Jimmy said. Grandpa motioned for Father to come and sit down on the sofa. Mother and Jimmy moved over to give him room so he could sit closest to Grandpa. It's like this, Grandpa said. There was this little elf called Snicker. The end. All right, right now we're going to have Keely get up and sing another song for us because I want to know how it feels. Go for it, Keely.
Thank you. Right. Hey, Miss Keely. That's great, Miss Keely. You know what? I want to know how it feels, too. And I've got a great idea, everybody. Why don't we sing Jingle Bells right now? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have a great Christmas, everyone. This is Yet to Come Productions at www.yettocomeproductions.com, or you can look us up on BGSSA on Facebook. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. <laughs>